This problem here is an example of a what we call a paired two sample test for the difference between um, means. Now it's really not two sample, and that's the key for this. This is paired. This is really only one sample. So let's read the problem so we can see how through the wording of the problem it, we definitely realize that there are one sample. Even though the data right here makes it look like there are two samples, there is really only one sample. One indicator of physical fitness is resting pulse rate. Ten men volunteered to test an exercise device advertised on television by using it three times a week for 20 minutes. Their resting pulse rates, beats per minute, were measured before the test began and then again after six weeks. Results are shown in the table below. Is there evidence that this kind of exercise can reduce resting pulse rates? How much more? So the key idea here is that there is only one sample. There is only 10 men used in this sample. We just looked at them twice, before and after. So Alan here was paired up with himself. His beats per minute was measured before and after the use of this exercise device. Same thing for Brandon, Carlos, David, Edwin, Franco, and so forth. So that's the key idea. There's only one sample. So there is only one sample here of size 10. So when we're talking about this, we do not want to treat this as a two sample means test. So what we want to do is we're concerned with not everybody's before or everybody's after. We're concerned with everybody's difference. So we actually need to go down the line here and try to figure out what everybody's difference was. For example, Alan's difference after minus before is zero. He had no difference between his before and after. Brandon had a difference of negative four. Again, we're doing after minus before. Carlos had a difference of negative four as well. David had a difference of negative one. Edward had a, Edwin had a difference of negative four as well. And Franco here, Franco, he had a difference of negative eight. And I don't even know how to say that name. Graham, maybe, whatever. He had a difference of negative three. And Hans had a difference of negative two. Ivan actually had a difference of positive one. His heart rate got higher after the program. And um, Jorge here had a difference of negative three. So it's actually these differences that we're interested in. So if you're using your T, it's easy to find the difference, but if you do want to use your calculator, you could put um, the before in list one and the after in list two, and then on your calculator screen, you could actually do list two minus list one. It'll subtract them all for you, and then just store it as, you know, list three, for example. And then what we're really interested in is, is the average of the differences. So if we take an average of all these differences, and again, we have that stored as list three on our calculator, the average of all the differences was negative 2.8. And the standard deviation of the differences is equal to, I believe the calculator gives you values of 2.5298. So again, we have one sample. All we care about is the one sample's difference. Looks like two samples, but they're not two different groups of people. It's one group of 10 guys that we looked at twice. So that's how you have to identify whether you have two samples or if you really only have one sample that you just analyzed twice. And that's what makes this a paired one sample test for the difference. So we need to set up our hypotheses. So our null hypothesis is, of course, status quo. There is no difference. So the true difference is equal to zero. There is no difference between the after and the before. That's what we have to always starting off assume. The alternative is that the true difference, the true average difference, is actually less than zero. And the reason why we're going less than zero is the question says, is there evidence that this kind of exercise can reduce resting heart rate? And a negative difference is what we saw. And again, that's um, after minus before. So we actually decrease your heart rate decreases. That's what we're interested in, a difference that's less than zero. So that's our step one, our hypotheses. Step two is, the condi again, um, the conditions. And that sample of 10 needs to be random. The sample of 10 needs to be less than 10% of the entire population. And we also need to make sure that our sample is big enough. Well, to be honest, 10 is not big enough, so we have to assume that um, pulse rates for the population is something that would be normally distributed. And that is a safe assumption in this case. So the third step basically now is we need to calculate our work. We have most of our work done right here. The main thing we need is a standard deviation or a standard error of the sampling distribution of that average difference. 
and the sampling distribution has a formula of the population standard deviation divided by the square root of 10, your sample size. But of course, we do not know the true population standard deviation of the difference. All we have is our sample to work with. So that's why this is more of an approximation than it is an actual standard deviation, which is why sometimes we refer to it as a standard error as well. So we're going to use the sample standard deviation 2.52 nine eight here and that gives us a standard deviation of the sampling distribution of 0.7997. So now we're ready to go for a t-score here and once again we're using a t-score because we did not know that true population standard deviation. So we're going to do what the difference we saw negative 2.8 minus zero the difference we expected from our null hypothesis divided by that standard deviation of the sampling distribution, 0.7997, and we get a t-score of negative 3.5013, which is a fairly low z-score, so we should have an idea of what's going to happen here, but we do need to find our p-value, and to find our p-value using the TI-83 or TI-84 calculator, or, or we could use the charts, but we're not going to use the charts. We've got our calculators can do it for us. We're going to do a TCDF looking below this, so negative 99 to negative 3.5013. Don't forget the comma 9 for the 9 degrees of freedom. Again, sample size minus 1. And if you calculate that value, you get a p-value of 0.0034, which is a fairly low p-value. So if we would think about the normal model here, try to draw somewhat decent looking one. White smack dab in the uh, middle is zero. That's the difference that we expected to have between these two, between these um, really one sample, you know, the difference, the before and after. We expect a difference of zero. And we go up and down three. And what we saw was actually at negative 3.51. So here's negative three right here. That's negative three. So we were down here at negative 3.5. So the probability that we discovered that one tail lowers down here, and that is a very small probability of 0 0.0034, but we saw it, and to be honest, that's pretty rare. Even if you use an alpha level of 0 0.01, we're still smaller than that, so our conclusion here would be to reject the null, because we saw something rare happen when it wasn't supposed to, so we're going to reject the null, and we're going to go with the alternative that the um, there is a difference, that there is evidence that this new exercise program that you could purchase on TV, whatever, actually does reduce pulse rates. So we got our null and alternative hypothesis, conditions work, and our conclusion based on a low p-value to reject the null. There is evidence that this new exercise will reduce um, pulse rates. Now, make sure you realize the main point of this problem is to realize that there is a before and an after but it really comes down to one group and we care about the differences between the two. So if there were two completely separate groups, you know, this group of guys and this group of guys, then that would have to be a two sample, but we don't have two different groups of guys, we only have one group. So next what I want to do is show you real quick how we could find a confidence interval to support this conclusion. Remember a confidence interval is the average you saw plus or minus a T star times your standard error of your sampling distribution. So this is really easy to find because we actually have all the information we need. We saw a difference of negative 2.8 plus or minus a T star for 95 percent confident. Nine degrees of freedom, you can look that up in your T chart, is 2.626 times the standard error that we calculated, standard deviation based on our samples, 0.7997. That gives us a margin of error of plus or minus 1.8089. So this creates an interval, a 95% confidence interval that could go as low as negative 4.6089 to as high as negative 0.9911. And the most important thing that we recognize about this interval is that zero is not in it. Zero is over here somewhere. Um, bigger than our interval. So we're 95% confident that the true difference between the before and after with this new exercise program is anywhere from negative 4.6 beats per minute lower after the use of the exercise to about negative, you, know, you can round that to negative 1 or negative 0.99 beats per minute lower after the exercise. So it does appear that we're 95% confident that we will have a lower heart rate after the use of the program.